Do you like donuts? Because even Michael likes them. Baby. Cause today, my dear friends, we're gonna create donut eaters. First off, we're gonna create the whole model from scratch. Then we're gonna animate it. And lastly, we'll create different variations to generate a collection. Okay, fasten your seatbelts and let's go. First, let's select a cube and delete it. Press X and delete. Press Shift A and then add a circle. Make sure to change the number of vertices to number 12. You can see how our circle got a little more rounded. Now we're gonna rotate it. So press R. You can see that now it rotates in all the directions. Press Y to lock it in the Y axis and then put 90 on your numpad and press Enter. This way, we got it rotated by 90 degrees in the Y axis. Now we're gonna scale it. So press S to scale and then make it any size you want, but I will go with something like this. So it's around double of the size. Now we're gonna go to the edit mode. So just press tab having the circle selected. Now you can see that I can select each of the point over here. Press A to select all the vertices. Then press E to extrude. Left click. Now we got all those points extruded, but we just can't see them. So to see them, we're gonna press S to scale and then just drag the mouse inward so you can see that now the points are being scaled towards the middle so let's go with all the way here we're gonna press a again to select all of it then press e to extrude we did that all the before and now we can drag this in the x-axis so now let's just make it a little thick so let's go with this size. The body of our donut eater is done. So let's press tab to get out of the edit mode. Now it's time to add the eyes. So let's press shift A again. We're gonna choose a sphere. 32 vertices is fine with us. So now we can see that the sphere is just behind the body. So now we're gonna play a little bit with the camera. So first of all, let's press number seven to move to the top view. Now we can press S to scale the sphere a little bit to a smaller size so we're gonna have you know the nice eyes of our donut eater so let's go with this size so by pressing 7 we got to the top view if we press number one we're gonna get to the side view so now we're gonna press g to move the object all around i'm gonna lock it in this z axis to move it just you know up like this let's say to this position now i'm going to press number three to see the front view now we can see the sphere just in the middle of our donut eater so as we want two eyes we're gonna press g to move the sphere around and let's press and let's put the eye to let's say this position now let's check the 3d perspective and as we can see the eyes are still kind of off the body so i'm just gonna press g x to lock it in the x axis and now we can just move it back and forth very freely now let's just put it somewhere over here now i'm going to use a modifier called mirror so let's go to modifiers and pick the mirror then i'm gonna select the body as the mirror object and you can see that the eye got mirrored down to the bottom but we want it to have it here on the left side so let's just check the y axis and then turn on the x axis and voila we suddenly have two eyes for our donut eater having the eye selected i'm gonna press r again to rotate it lock it in the y axis and then put 90 on the keyboard this way we got those circular rings pointing towards in front of the body and that's because later on we're gonna color these rings to the black and that way we're gonna get the eye now let's create the legs for our donut ears so i'm gonna press shift a and then we're gonna add a cylinder let's have a look at it so we can see that it's just behind our donut eater again okay let's press r to rotate it and lock it in the y axis again we're gonna press 90 to rotate it by 90 degrees now let's scale it down so press s and then just drag it all the way down like this we're gonna go with the front view so let's press number three and move it all the way to the place where we want our legs to be so let's just 
let's put it over here then let's press number one to see the side view press g to move it all around and lock it in the x axis and now drag it just to the middle of our donut ear then press s to scale it but we're gonna just scale it again in the x axis then we're gonna make our legs a little longer so they're gonna be really nicely visible Yes, and I really like this size. It's time to zoom in. Press tab to get to the edit mode. Now let's see the perspective view. So you just have, you know, the overall idea of what's happening over here. I will stay in this side view. Now I'm gonna turn on the X-ray. So this way we see all the points also on the other side. So now if I pick the vertices over here, it will also select the vertices on the other side of the cylinder and delete the vertices okay, let's get back again to the side view select the bottom vertices and press F this way we got those vertices filled with a face let's toggle over the x-ray view so now we can see that we still got a hole here in our leg so let's switch from the vertex select to edge select holding alt I will click on the edge of the arc here. This way we got the whole cycle of edges selected. Then press F to fill it with the face. And we're gonna do the same with the other side. So hold Alt, click on the arc and press F. And let's get out from the edit mode by pressing tab. And we can see that we got another very nice right leg for our donut eater. And now it's finally time to create the donut. Let's shift A and add a torus. In here again, we can choose a different parameters, but let's change the mine radius to around 0.5. Now let's press G to move our donut just in front of our eaters and also lock it in the X axis like this. And then left click. We're gonna scale it now with the S and scale it down a little to this size let's select our donut we're gonna press tab to go to the edit mode and we're gonna press 3 to get the front view again we will toggle the x-ray view now we're gonna select all the vertices in the upper half of our donut like this you can see that all of them got selected i'm gonna toggle the x-ray off now we're gonna press shift d then Z. We're gonna move our icing all the way to the top. We want to work on our icing in a separate mesh. So we're gonna press P, then choose this selection. This way we got another mesh created. So let's get out of the donut by pressing tab. And now pick the icing and then press tab again. And now we just got to edit this mesh over here. Okay, let's press G to move it again back on the top of our donut. So let's pick a reasonable height for the icing. Let's say it's gonna be around here. The icing are usually not really perfectly spread it on a donut. And so to make it more sexy, we're gonna make it more organic looking right now. So I'm going to pick the bottom vertices here and move them a little bit down with the G and then lock it in the Z axis and just move it a little bit down like this. I'm going to do it around the whole donut. So I'm done with moving the vertices so the icing looks more organic. Now let's select everything by pressing A. And to give our frosting or icing a little bit more of the volume, we're gonna press Alt E and then we choose the option Extrude Faces Along Normals. So this way you can see that the faces got extruded, you know, exactly as they are along the normals. So now we're just gonna give it a little bit more of the volume so let's just make it a little bit more like this mm -hmm. you can see that now we can almost see the donut ready but of course we are not done yet now to make our icing more icing looking we're gonna get back to the object mode with pressing tab and we'll add a modifier called subdivision surface so right after we just added we can see that our icing now looks exactly as you want it look at that of course if you want to get it more smooth we're just gonna add more the levels so if I add let's say five you can see that it will just get smooth as much as it can but I will keep it with the number one just to get 
the feeling of it. To make our donut even more cute looking, we're gonna add some topping. I will start with pressing Shift A again, and we're gonna add a cylinder. This cylinder is a little bit too big for our icing. I will also reduce the vertices of it to just 12. Then press G and X to lock it in the axis, move it just in front of us over here. We're gonna press S to scale it all the way down because our topping will be just really small, small parts on our icing. So let's just make it really, really small. I'm gonna zoom in, press G, Z to move it just in front of us to be a little bit bigger. Again, we will just make it even more small to probably this size, then S to scale and then make it a little bit longer in the Z axis. So I'm just gonna press Z and then drag the mouse just all the way like this. Our task right now will be basically copying the cylinder and putting it on our icing. So let's just get to the front view, press G, move it all the way so it touches our donut like this. And basically we're just gonna use all the techniques that you already know. So let's just press R to rotate. And then we can put, let's say 90, move it so it's laying on our donut like this. I will also make a collection here that I will name topping and move that cylinder just to that collection. Now we can freely press Shift D to copy that same mesh again. And we'll just do the same all around the donut. When we created enough of toppings, we can now select all of them, going here and then press Shift and select the last one. Now we're gonna press Shift D to copy, then press R to rotate, Z to rotate in the Z axis, and we can just rotate it a little bit so it looks that all of them are just being randomly spread it on the top of our icing. And I think that's now perfect. So our scene is almost ready, let's shift A again and then add a plane to create a surface where our donut eater will stand. I will move to the side view, now having the plane selected, I'll press G, now move it all around, let's press Z to lock it in the Z axis and we will just move it right so it touches the legs of our ear. Now we're gonna press 7 to get to the top view. Press S to scale our plane and we'll just scale it as much as we want. So let's make it really big. The size of our plane, of course, will depend on how much of the space we need it to cover. So if we press zero, you're gonna see the view from our camera. And we can see that we still have plenty of blank space here. So let's just press S again and scale our plane so it covers the whole scene. So there is no blank space. Let's light up our scene. So we're gonna press Shift A, add a plane, go to the side view, press G, then Z to move it all the way to the top so it's above our donut. Then we're gonna press 7 to see the top view. Just scroll out a little bit, press S, and then we're gonna make also a big plane above our donut either. Okay, now we're gonna go and add a new material to it. We're gonna name it a key light, change the surface to emission. So it's gonna look like this. And so wh what this plane right now will do is emit a light on our scene here. So let's try and see how it looks in the render viewport. We can see that our objects are well lit, but we of course can change the strength here. So let's go with, let's say 1.1 or 1.2 to get even more brightness. Before making animations, let's also add materials to our objects. Let's get back to the basic viewport. Let's zoom in. I'm gonna pick one of those eyes. First, let's add just a basic material to it. So we just click new. We're gonna name it Ice. We'll keep it actually white. We'll try to make all the objects really shiny, so we'll add a really high specular value. So let's go with 0.8. Now I'm going to press Tab. Now we're gonna select the middle part of our eye to give it a black dot in our white eye. To do so, first I will switch to face selection, drag and pick the middle faces like this. 
then I'm going to hold Shift and Alt, and then we'll click in the middle of those faces to select the whole circle of it. Right now, when having it selected, I will add a new material with the plus button, add a new material, it's gonna be the black eye. We'll change the base color of it to pure black, so just drag all this down like that. And now, what is important is clicking on the assign. So this way, we assign it this black color, color <laughs> to this selection. If you want to quickly check it, just go to render viewport. Now we can see that we got our eyes. Now let's get back to object mode, pressing tab. We're gonna select the body. We'll add a new material to it. Name it body donut either. Then let's change the specular value to 0.8 to make it really shiny and reduce the roughness to around 0.2. Again, we'll pick a base color that we want. So I will go with a nice pastel mint color like this one. Now let's select his legs and also add a material to it. I'm gonna rename it to legs. And again, let's do a specular value to 0.8 and reduce the roughness to 0.2. And now let's give him a nice color. I will go with a darker color and I will go with some sort of pink like this one. Now let's pick a donut, add also a material to it. I will name it a donut. We will also add a specular value to 0.8, but the roughness will stay. And now let's also give it a donut color. So let's pick a dough color. It's gonna be a little darker, I guess. Then we will pick the icing, add another material, we'll name it icing. Then we'll give it a high specular of 0.9 and also reduce the roughness to 0.3. And again, let's pick a nice base color for it. So I will go with a nice light pink like this one and lastly we will also add a material to our topping let's select the first cylinder here add a new material we'll name it topping one we will leave the settings and choose a color so first one will be the blue now i will just assign colors to different randomly picked cylinders let's also add another color for our topping let's add a new material let's name it top Pink two, and it will give it a nice yellow color. And again, we will assign this material to some different cylinders on our donut. Let's add another color, but this time it's gonna be topping number three, and it's gonna be a red color, this one over here. And again, we'll assign it to some different cylinders. The last color we're gonna add is a green one. Let's get another material in there, name it Topping number four, and let's pick a nice green color. I like this one. Again, we will assign it to different cylinders, totally randomly. And I'm done with coloring the topping as well. And this is how our scene looks after rendering. Look at that, how cool. First off, let's say that we want to animate the donut, let's say in the x-axis, but when we move it, we can see that the icing and the topping is not moving with it. To fix that, we need to take all the toppings. So I'm gonna select the first one, press shift, and then select the last one like that. Now I'm gonna drag it all over on the top of our donut, then press shift to make it apparent, then just release it. And now let's try to rotate the donut again. And then if it's on the axis, we can see that the topping is moving with it. So yes, what we need to do is also taking the icing, then drag it over the donut with the shift and then release it. Right now, when we're gonna move the donut, the same way that we did before, the whole object with all the icing and the topping is moving and that's what we needed. We're gonna start with the animation of the body of our donut eater. So let's select it, go to object data properties. Now let's find the shape keys. We're gonna press the plus button once and then again, make sure that it's selected the key one. Now we're gonna press tab. I will again toggle the x-ray, then pick this edge select. I'm gonna select this middle edges over here. And then I will scale first in the y-axis by the factor of six. So I'm just gonna press six on my numpad and then press enter. Then I'm gonna press S again, but this time we're gonna scale it in the Z axis again by the factor of six. So now you can see the donut eater has his 
mouth open very fully. Again, we will press tab to just get out of the edit mode. I will toggle off the x-ray and now look at this. There's this value number. If I increase it, you can see that the mouth will start to open. So this type of kind of animation is called shape keys. So now when we change the number of the value, we can see how the mouth is being open and closed. Okay, now we're gonna switch to a different layout called animation, still having the body selected. Then from dope sheet, I will switch to into shape key editor. I will move the frame to number one and then press this little dot next to the value. This way we got a first keyframe. Then I will move the frame number to number 25. This time I will increase the value to fully number one. So our mouth is just fully open and then we'll click on this dot over here. So now it created another keyframe. And if we move the frame timeline back, we can see that the mouth is being open, I mean closed, and then it's gonna open again as we move the frame towards the number 25. Then I will move the frame to number 50 and then change the value all the way to zero. So the mouth is gonna be closed and again, we'll click on this dot over here. So this time we created sort of a loop. So it starts all the way from the closed mouth to being open at the frame 25. Then it's being closed again if we move to the frame number 50. Let's just zoom a little out from the camera view over here. And this time we're gonna animate the donut. So let's select the donut. I will get back to Adobe Sheet. Let's move all the way back again to the first frame. Then press G, X to move the donut in the X axis. Now you can see that if you just sort of simulate the animation, we want our donut to fly from the outside of the frame all the way through the mouth, and then just leave the scene again, right? So therefore, we need to place the donut outside of the camera view. So that's this point. I'm going to the object properties over here, and here at the X location, just gonna press this dot again. And this way we made the first keyframe for the donut when it's outside the camera view. Now we know that if we move to the frame number 25, the mouth is fully open. And that means that at this frame, we want the donut to be exactly in the middle of the mouth. So what we're gonna do right now is just press G, X, and move the donut just to the middle of the mouth of our donut eater, like this. And then make another keyframe by pressing this little dot. All right, let's move back to the first frame. The donut is outside of the frame. Now we are moving to the middle of our animation. Suddenly, yes, the donut just hits the middle when the donut either has its mouth open. And now we know that on the frame 50, the donut has to be outside of the camera viewport. So we're gonna press G again, X, and we'll just move the donut all the way so it's beyond the camera viewport, right? So now we can see that it's outside and let's create another keyframe over here. So let's play it again from the very beginning. On the very first keyframe, the donut is being outside. Then in the middle, it flies through the mouth of our donut eater and then it flies away when the donut eater has its mouth closed. So that's basically our animation loop. We can also make the animation of our donut a little bit more fun. So let's go to the frame number one. In here, we're gonna create a keyframe of the rotation in the X axis. So that's the first frame and the first keyframe. Then we're gonna move to the frame number 25. So that means that at this point, our donut is exactly in the middle. So we're gonna go with three, six, zero over here and then create a keyframe again. And now what it does, and I will just show you right away, is gonna rotate our beautiful donut like this. When it starts behind the camera, so it's just gonna rotate all the way through the 360 degrees when it hits the middle of the mouth of our donut either and then we're gonna go all the way to the end of our animation loop and instead of 360 we're gonna press 720 which is the double of it basically and again we'll make a keyframe so what that will do is basically from the very middle 
part of the loop is gonna keep the rotation again all the way until the very end of the loop so let's just play through the whole animation loop again so you can see that the donut just rotates and hits the middle and then it rotates again at the end of the animation loop and this is our animation loop to render our animation loop we're gonna go to output properties and here we're gonna set the end frame to number 50 because that's the end of our animation loop so you, now you can see that it also just got limited over here in the dope sheet then we're gonna choose a folder where the whole animation will be exported to and now we have two options either we will export the png sequence which means that if i choose this png over here it will render the frame number one separately from number two all the way to number 50. So we're gonna get 50 PNG images. The second option is the AVI JPEG or AVI RAW and it will export just one video file. So I will choose the PNG sequence and now I will go to render and render animation. So we got 50 PNG images rendered as expected. You can see that for example, on the frame 25 over here, the donut and also the donut eater are exactly in the middle of their animation loop so it just corresponds basically to every frame that we just did in the blender and this is how it looks when you take those 50 png images and make a video from it as soon as we have one model and it's seen ready with the animation we can then create different variations of it and by doing so create a whole collection so beside the very first donut eater that we did together I did exactly the same with the also other ones. So here you can see another type of donut eater and here is the third version. So basically we did exactly the same, nothing really changed. We just added different variations. I did the same with donuts. So here we have the second chocolate donut and then there is also a one with a blueberry icing. And, and lastly, I also added different backgrounds. So if we just open it up, we can see that I just copied the floor and then added a new material to it with a different color. So this one is the second background and here we have another one. There's the fourth one. So this way we now have different variants um, in the terms of our NFTs. We would have different traits for our attributes. Just so you can see if I move the timeline, the animation of both the body of our donut eater and the donut is still the same. For each of the new trait, like this new body, I had to create the shape key animation all over again. To create random combinations of all the traits, I'm gonna use my Raptor Max Generator plugin. So this one detects all the traits in the attributes. So now you can see all the backgrounds as well as all the donuts and the donut ears. The analyzing button over here calculates all possible combinations of those traits so we can see that we get all together 36 combinations. To get the Raptor Max Generator work, I had to name all my attributes with this attribute underscore and the name of the attribute. Then I will also need to switch the visibility of all the traits on. So we will create a big mess in our scene. Now you can see that all the traits are visible, so that's why it creates a little bit of mess over here. And because our collection is an animated one, meaning that there is this animation loop that we created together, we also need to tell that to the Raptor plugin. So there is an animation settings and an animation length, which we'll set to number 50. And that's because our animation loop ends here at the frame number 50. So both these numbers have to be the same. And then there's export settings for 3D GLB files. When we leave these checkboxes as they are, when we hit the generation button, it also exports each combination into a separate 3D GLB file. But for this collection, we don't really need that. So let's uncheck those boxes. And that's because we want to render each animation loop into a separate video file and not the 3D one. Before the actual generation, we can also set a rarity to different attributes. So if you want to, let's say, make the very first donut, this pink one, a little bit more rare, we're gonna change its rarity to a high number. So let's give it a 95. And now you can see that to get a pink donut, there is only a 4% or around 5% 
probability that it will be picked by the algorithm. We can also do the same with the eaters. So let's give it a 90. And lastly, we'll also do that with some of the backgrounds. So let's just increase some of the number over here to 85. And you can see that there's only 9% of this background tree to be picked by the algorithm. When we change the rarity of certain traits, it also makes sense to reduce the number of maximum combinations that we want to create because if we create all the combinations, there is no of the traits to be rare, right? I will change the maximum number of combinations to number six. And now we are ready to start the generation. Let's go. The generation process is done. Now when I move the frame number, I can see the first combination that got generated. But as we move the frame number further along, we can see now a different combinations. So this one has a different donut the blueberry one that is my most favorite one as well as the change of the background so if we just move like you know further away now we also see a different donut eater but again we have a different combination here so all the combinations are actually unique all six combinations that we wanted to be generated are now stored here on our timeline we have two options how to render our collection right now. The first option would be generating a PNG sequence of all the animations of each combination. So that would generate all in total of 294 frames. To do so, head to Output Properties, then find the Output section. First thing we're gonna do would be choosing a folder where the whole image sequence will be generated to. So just use this icon over here to pick the folder. Then pay attention to a file format. So we will go with a PNG over here. Then we can choose a different options for the quality. So I'll just leave it like this. Then go to render and render animation. So that would generate 294 PNG images, basically the same as we had with the very first animation loop. The second option would be generating a video. But this time we're gonna change the file format from PNG to AV JPEG or AV RAW, depending on what we want, but I will choose AV JPEG. Again, we can choose a quality, but I will leave it like this. Normally, you would head to render and render animation, but that would actually render a video all the way from a frame number one to a frame 294. And that means that it would render just a single video of all the combinations that we got generated. And that's not what we want. What you probably have now in mind would be changing the frame range to actually pick exactly that frame where the animation of one combination is stored. But that would be a horrible manual work to render each animation by changing the frame start and frame end. So if you had thousands of combinations, you can imagine that that would be definitely not a way to go. But luckily, the Raptor plugin solved this problem for us. Let's head back to the Raptor plugin and now scroll a little down to find the render settings. In here, you can see the file format that you chose in the output session as well as the output folder that you picked by yourself. Then there is an option to start rendering from a different combination. If you already rendered 500 combinations and then you want to start from a 500 and number one, you're gonna put a number 500 over here to start from that point so you don't have to start all the way from the beginning. As we don't have any video rendered yet, we will leave number one over here and let's render. The rendering is that we got six separate videos, each with an animation loop of the unique combination. That donut here is available for download in the description. I hope that you got inspired, also learned something new today. So now you are ready to create your own 3D animated loop NFT collection. If there is anything you can do for me, that would be hitting the like button. Thank you so much. It helps the channel a lot. Thank you for watching. Tom and Michael Hart out.